You're listening to Luke's English Podcast. For more information, visit teacherluke.co.uk. Hello, Lepsters in Lepland. How are you doing today? I hope you're all doing well out there in all corners of podcast land, wherever you are, whatever you find yourself doing at this particular moment. You've chosen to press play on this podcast episode, and I thank you for that. Welcome to my podcast. My name's Luke, and I'm an English teacher from London, and this is my podcast for learners of English like you, I expect. Are you a learner of English? I expect you are if you chose to listen to this. Here I am again at my desk in the podcastle preparing a new free episode for you all. I've taken a little break from the Mammoth Premium series I've been doing this week about homophones and jokes. Premium Lepsters will know that I've uploaded eight parts of series 24 now, and there are still three or four parts to go. If you haven't checked them out yet, do so. In the Luke's English Podcast app, in the Categories section, you'll find premium and also pronunciation videos. That's where you go to get the premium content on your phone. On a computer, go to teacherluke.co.uk slash premium to get all the premium content there. And for more information and how to sign up, go to teacherluke.co.uk slash premium info. But this is free episode number 678. And in this one, you're going to listen to a conversation with a guest who hasn't been on this podcast for over 10 years. Today, I'm talking to my friend Howard Roach, who first appeared in episode five about Joaquin Phoenix. And then he made at least one more appearance in episode 11, which I think was called Men Versus Women. And then that was it for nearly 11 years until now. I know Howard from our days teaching together at the London School of English, but he's back again now to talk about something completely different that he's been doing since he stopped teaching seven or eight years ago. Howard now works in the vintage furniture trade in London. He gets hold of pieces of vintage furniture, then sells them on to customers perhaps restoring the furniture in the process. This is a business that he set up actually eight years ago when he decided to transition from being a teacher to being a furniture dealer. Howard's business is called Vintique London. That's Vintique, which is a sort of a a portmanteau word, a mix of the word vintage and the word antique, put them together, Vintique. So the business is called Vintique London, and this is what it says on their website, vintiquelondon.co.uk. The Furniture Relove Revolution, retro, vintage and mid-century furniture warehouse, London. Based in Peckham, Vintique London is an eclectic treasure trove of retro, mid-century, vintage and designer furniture and interior accessories. What started out as a hobby collecting iconic vintage and retro pieces soon turned into a startup business in 2012. Since then, we haven't looked back. So I'm now going to talk to Howard about the vintage furniture trade in London, what kind of stuff he sells, how he buys sells and restores interesting and cool items of furniture and if he's any if he's got any stories about particular purchases or sales that he's made in the past as i mentioned before howard also used to be an english teacher working with me at the london school of english with other guests from this podcast that you might have listened to in the past so there are also a few tales of teaching from back in the old days in london at the beginning I'd like to look at some vocab, actually, before we go any further. Let's have a quick look at some vocab to begin with. Here's some stuff that might come up in the conversation and generally stuff that's relevant to the topic of buying and selling furniture. So here's some language that you need to know. So obviously, first of all, we've got the word furniture, but you need to know that it's an uncountable noun. So we don't say a furniture and we don't say furnitures. It could be some furniture. Okay, Uh, or maybe pieces of furniture or items of furniture. Okay, but it's an uncountable noun. Uh, Then we got the word vintage, which you've heard a couple of times. Vintage basically means that something is typical of a period in the past and of very high quality. So vintage furniture is just from a specific period. I guess we would uh, contrast this with antique furniture by saying that vintage is probably a bit more recent than that. Uh, In fact, you know, you can talk about retro furniture, retro stuff, using styles or fashions from the recent past, 
For example, we specialize in selling retro and vintage pieces. So in this case, the vintage period that, that we're looking at is mid-century, which is the next phrase in the list. Mid-century, meaning from the middle of the last century. So we're talking about 1950s, 1960s. For example, most of our items are mid-century in style. So that period from the sort of 50s, 60s, that kind of style. Very plain, simple, um, functional furniture. Um, some people refer to Scandinavia. They talk about like Scandi style, that sort of thing. Um, mid-century retro vintage stuff. Uh, then we've got the expression turn of the century, meaning the beginning of the last century, the early 1900s. For example, it's also possible to find pieces from the turn of the century. So that period at the end of the 19th century. Uh, we've got the word antiques or antique. Antique be means old and valuable, like an old and valuable item. And you can think uh, darker, more ornate pieces from an earlier period. Uh, antiques, often darker, more ornate in style. Then we've got the, the phrase dark wood furniture. This is furniture made from darker woods like mahogany and other types of dark wood furniture. Um, we have the word secondhand. If something is secondhand, like I bought a secondhand guitar, for example, or secondhand book, uh, bookcase, uh, secondhand means it's previously owned by someone else. For example, all items are used or secondhand but have been fully restored to their original quality. Used is the same as secondhand, basically. Um, have you ever heard of a car boot sale? It's an absolute staple of English life, the car boot sale at the weekend. This is an event where people load up their car boot with stuff from their home or from their loft, um, like old stuff that, they, that they've just had in storage. And then they drive to a field and they open the boot and sell the contents to people. It's where everyone drives there with all their boots open and you walk around. It's like a market, but you're buying stuff out of the boot of people's car, a car boot sale. It could be a way to pick up antiques, in fact, or, or vintage items. For example, I first started going to car boot sales and markets where you can find some real bargains. Then we've got the expression an auction, A-U-C-T-I-O-N, an auction. This is an event where things are sold by bidding. An item is presented and the bidding begins at a certain amount and people in the audience can raise their bids until the item is sold to the highest bidder. It's like eBay, but it's in real life. That's an auction. For example, I've bought a few things at auctions. You can learn a lot from the other dealers. Uh, we've got the adjective restored. If an item is restored, it means it might be fixed or certain, certain parts might have been replaced, but it's back to its original look and its original quality. Um, for example, a fully restored mid-century vintage chest of drawers. And then we've got the word quid. So if you say 30 quid, quid means pounds. It's just a sort of colloquial slang word for pounds. It's 30 quid means 30 pounds. For example, it's just 75 quid for you, mate. It means it's just 75 pounds for you. Let's just quickly go through some items of furniture and let me describe what they look like. You can imagine what they look like as I describe them. So first we have a chest of drawers. This is a large wide item with drawers. Drawers are the things that you pull out. You might keep your socks in the top drawer. Okay, D-R-A-W-E-R, -E drawer, a chest of drawers. Okay, it's a large rectangular item with drawers in it. Then you've got a bookcase, which is an item with space for storing books, of course. A sideboard, a sideboard is a low, long piece, which is supposed to go against a wall and contains some drawers and some cabinet space. You could put a TV on it, but that's a sideboard, low and long. Uh, goes against a wall. A high board is like a sideboard, but it goes higher against the wall with perhaps a glass cabinet with just two doors. Then you've got a record cabinet, which is uh, a space for a record player and records. You've got dining chairs, which are chairs for sitting at a table. They don't usually have arms on them. They're upright. And then armchairs. These are chairs for relaxing in the living room. Okay. So there you go. That was some vocab. Let's now get started. As I said earlier, before we get to the whole topic of Howard's furniture business, there is some chat about our time as teachers in London with about 15 minutes of stories and reminiscing about teaching. And then we get onto the furniture. Not literally. <laughs> we don't actually climb onto the furniture at any point in this episode. 
But when we get onto the furniture, we're not also literally getting onto the furniture, conducting the interview balanced on chairs and tables. No, it just means that we're talking about furniture after about 15 minutes. But anyway, now for the first time in over 10 years, let's welcome back Howard Roach onto Luke's English Podcast. Howard, hello. Good evening. You all right? <laughs> I'm fine. How are you? Very good, mate. You? Very well, thanks. So how's it going? How, how is everything? How are the kids? Very good, mate. I mean, um, growing so quick. I mean, they're like six and four now. Yeah. And I've re- like really noticed a difference in the last kind of, um, in the last couple of months, basically, instead of wanting to hang out with us, they're like, let's go down the park and meet other people and play football. So they're like, they're getting more and more independent every day. And I'm seeing that, you know, in like a couple of years, I'll be like, yeah, fuck off. Bob. Mm. Go and do your own thing, dad. I'm not interested. So um mm. so yeah you know i mean time consuming though as as i'm sure you know right yeah how's how's everything else how's the wife very good very good you know we just celebrated 10 years Did when you? we were in lockdown so uh yeah it's, good. it's honestly it's amazing how quickly it all flies we've we've been together 10 years as well have you yeah 2012 uh, 2010 I, you know what i re- yeah. I remember the day you came in and you were like, yeah, I met this girl like in a bar, like this, this French girl. And I remember, <laughs> I remember you actually talking about it. God, I can't believe that's 10 years. I mean, when did you leave London I, School of English? I do remember talking to you about it. I remember exactly where we were sitting. We were sitting at those two computers just next to the entrance to the yeah. teacher's room. It's weird. Do you remember, how do I remember things like that? How long ago did you leave London School of English? Uh, 2012, sort of September 2012 is when I left. Yeah. Did, you, did you leave before me? Or after. No, I think I left. Uh, I think I left. I left in two thousand thirteen. Okay, 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 so, um, okay. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's crazy, isn't it? How time flies. Oh, I do miss mate, those days. It's scary. In it. Yeah. What's that? I was going to say I do miss those days. Sort of like it was quite good fun, wasn't it? Hanging around, but there was good people. We had yeah. a good gang of. People. You know what? I think it was a really good age to do it. Do you know what I mean? Like I was in my thirties. Most yeah, I think I was mostly in my thirties, and I think mm. it was a really good age to kind of be doing that sort of job because you've still got loads of energy and you know you kind of like enjoy the social i i enjoyed when i look back on that the thing that i enjoyed the most was the social part of it you know the actual teaching bit of it i didn't really enjoy that much i found it quite stressful i think um yeah so uh so yeah i'm kind of really glad i did it um and i had a lot of fun i got a lot of really good memories and i am quite sad you know when i when i see like photos of like the school or something like that i really sort of reminisce and think oh you know friday what would i be doing on a friday now probably you know like you've got the you've got the hour off when lee does his talk and it's yeah you know, i tell you what's so weird it took me quite a few years like probably five or six years to actually get out of that okay you start a lesson at 9 15 i was so regimented into doing uh, 9 15 to 10 30 lesson 10 10 30 to 11 break and i still remember all the times and it's amazing like because i'm i don't know it's it's and sometimes i still think god what would i be doing now you know i was at london school of english because you know one of the best yeah. things about being a teacher is that the sort of when it's good being in the classroom and interacting yeah, with the people and everyone's like yeah. it's, you know the visual it's, side of it and all that stuff you know it's one of the best but it's also one of the worst yeah. isn't it you're like coming out they're going oh my god like coming out <laughs> really sweating going oh that was the worst lesson ever but like with a massive headache or you go you know, in on monday morning and, and pete and pete's like um you know howard um it's like change of plan you're going to be <laughs> doing an ibc this week and you're like, yeah. Fuck. it's like 45 minutes you're like yeah i need a i need a, I need a, I need a leadership lesson <laughs> <laughs> yeah so we had lots of those those moments like the two of us like oh, at man, computers so fucking typing and trying to i i literally it. remember i remember being literally one minute to the lessons going and everyone's getting <laughs> this, and i'm still like i haven't got a lesson i haven't got a lesson somebody give me a lesson and literally walking up the stairs still thinking what yeah. am i doing what am i doing you know <laughs> and i'm sure i told you many many a time like after a few years i started having this recurring dream that i was I was in the staff room and the lesson was about to start and I didn't have, and it must've been like a really stressful thing for me in life because I cause, and up to a, f- a couple of years ago, I swear I was still getting those dreams. You know, I was in the staff room and uh, it was about to kick off and I still didn't have anything. And yeah, but anyway, that's, that's always the way I've kind of worked. So post-traumatic, everything's lasting. Post-traumatic stress disorder. Yeah. yeah, no, I think it is. I think it is. It is nice to talk to you again after quite a long time. We've, yeah. we've just been chatting for about 25 minutes already. Wow um and uh yeah like the last time i saw you was ages ago 
So what, uh, what shall I, how shall I begin? What I normally do is when I speak to my friends on this podcast, I say to, uh, I ask, ask the person how we know each other. How do we know each other? So like, how do we know each other from, um, when did we probably met about 11, 10, 11 years ago, I think it's longer than that. Really? Yeah, it's about. So I started. We anyway, we met at the London School of English. We were both teachers. Mm. And I started in two thousand six, and you probably started in. No, I started a couple in, of years later. I started in two thousand and six. Oh, did I, you? Yeah. I think I might have been there. So maybe I started a year early. I don't know. Yes, yeah, so we met. We met like fourteen years ago. Oh my god. Yeah. So um, so yeah, like just you know, both of us teachers, and uh. And yeah, I kind of like showed you the ropes, I think, kind of like taught you, taught, taught you what you know now. So yeah. <laughs> That's right, maybe. I remember, oh, do I remember me? Oh, do, what do you remember about our days as English teachers at the London School oh, of English? A lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. Everything, you know, certainly me was last minute. We had a lot of fun in the staff room, a lot of good times, you know, with the students. And, you know, I remember it with a lot of... Um, good memories a lot of good memories um so yeah no it was all good you know and uh, some things i can't repeat obviously um really but yeah 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 of course i mean there wasn't i think most of the time you know we were professional but you know there was the occasional slip <laughs> <laughs> yeah. i guess so it was 14 years ago wasn't it yeah we've got some stories yeah, that, a long time. and we were in our youth then you know so now we're like adults we've got kids you know yeah so um it's changed uh, what what were the what were the what were the less good? What were the worst things? Because you're you're not a teacher anymore. No. What, for you, um, well, did you enjoy being an English teacher? I enjoyed. So what I enjoyed was the social part of it, like meeting the students, meeting from all these people from around the world, um, doing the. You know, I used to play football with them every week. Uh, I did this. I did a lot of the social events, which the school uh, kindly paid me for. Um, so those are the bits I loved. The bits I hated was probably the teaching bit, which I find quite transformative. <laughs> so the, 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 um, the worst part about teaching was the teaching, basically. Well, it was kind of knowing, like, you know, get when you actually got in depth of the teaching, you know, like when people started asking me about grammar and all that sort of thing, I found that, because um, I didn't really know a great deal about it, I found that quite um, testing, shall we say. Right, so, I, yeah, that was, that was the hardest. I remember, so, but it was a lot of fun in general. It was. It was a lot of fun. I mean, I just... <laughs> I just remember, I mean, you were a popular teacher. Um, so even though you say that you, you felt like you didn't know grammar and things like that, that maybe wasn't your strength. But, uh, you know, you had other strengths, which was just the ability to engage the group and to, you know, they... Make them have fun. Yeah. yeah. We you, had a lot of fun. Do you remember any... There was a lot of games and songs and... Do you remember any of your favourite things that you used to do in class? Some of my favourite things, so we always used to like listen to music and sing along to the music. And I'm sure some of the other teachers probably remember, you know, I used to, every Friday, it was like, get Angel, Robbie Williams' Angels out, to get them all to sing. And that was when I had nothing else to do. I was literally spent. Um, what else? So those, a lot of just like games and um, what else? What else did we do? I remember I once, remember. I remember once you rushing down into the teacher's room. Yeah. Like, I don't know if it was a break, maybe a 10 minute break. You rushed into the teacher's room and this is, this has gone down in, in legends now um, with all the people we used to work with. You know what I'm going to say. <laughs> is it the one about the present perfect? <laughs> yes. it yeah, it is. You rushed into the teacher's room, stressed out, stressed out. And you like, um, which we used to do sometimes you'd rush into, you know, we would rush into the teacher's room and I ask think. our colleagues a question about grammar that we we're trying to, you know, deal with. Cause at the London school of English, it was quite stressful because it, it was a school with a good reputation. It was quite an expensive school, yeah. maybe one of the most expensive schools in London, actually, which was great. I mean, it was a great school to, to, to work in cause they, they looked after their teachers quite well. And for lots of reasons, but it was quite stressful because the, the students expected a certain standard. And they used to mark you out of five at the end of the week as well. Not even at the end of the week, at the beginning. Do you remember? At the beginning, yeah, twice on a Tuesday and then on a Friday as well. Yeah, that's right. So you'd be te you'd, you'd have your first class on Monday. You'd, you'd teach yeah. them for five or six hours on a Monday. And then within the, f the, the first hour and a half on the Tuesday morning, you'd have to give them these first impression slips. Oh, I hate it. And that. the first Absolutely impressions were basically, are you happy with X, Y, and Z? Are you happy with your course? Yeah. 
Are you happy with your accommodation and some other things like that? And like, you know, we had to use some kind of Darren Brown mind control techniques when we handed those forms out. <laughs> Do you remember? It's like, um, you know, I, I used to hand them out to the students and say, so uh, the, you know, the management would like you to um, complete these forms it's you know it's no big deal. We just want to check that you're you're happy with everything, right? And if you if you're not happy with anything, then you know the manager will want to talk to you. As I, as I remember, I think a few of my forms actually might have gone missing between the classroom and the, the manager. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite possible, but it was always a yeah. horrible moment for us that when oh, we handed yeah, them out yeah, yeah. and that nervous, sweaty sort of feeling. Especially after, after you've taught someone, because some of the courses were like a month. So if you taught someone for a month. And, you know, you think you've, you've had some really good banter and you've got on really well and you thought, you know, this guy's learned something and he, you know, he respects me as a teacher and, you know, he's really taken on board everything I've told him. And, you know, I think we're, we've got a really good relationship. And then he gives you a two out of five. At the end. He's like, oh my God, I want to kill him. Yeah. Uh, so oh, no. yeah, that was hard. That's the end of the week. They'd give full, full yeah. detail. It could be the end feedback. of the month as well, couldn't it? Because some of the classes were a month. Right. Or even longer, right? Six weeks. Right. I think. Yeah, we used to collect in those yellow feedback forms and they were like, Yeah, that know, was Oh Friday. Opportunity God. they would mark us out of out of five for various uh, yeah. different categories and there are also sections in there about like questions. Uh, some of the some of the answers that turned up on those forms were pretty funny. Do you remember the one uh, there there were two funny like famously funny responses one of them was like um where has your english improved the most in, in which areas that's it in which areas has your english improved the most and one person wrote high street kensington <laughs> Brilliant. you know obviously it should be you know the speaking or my vocab but it's like which areas high street kensington great you you learned a lot of english on the course uh, and the other one was like uh, what do you think we do best at the london school of english and the answer was uh, melting people from different countries. <laughs> <laughs> oh, classic. Oh, there's loads of those. And um, yeah, so that was always quite stressful. Um, uh, yeah. So anyway, the story, you came rushing into the teacher's room, stressed out because you were obviously trying to teach some grammar and you realised you were a little bit out of your depth. And um and and it was like, oh, oh guys, so present perfect, yeah, uh, present perfect. That's when you don't give a fuck about time, right? <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, I, when you, I, I deny that to this day. I think you, it's Shirley, that. Shirley, but, uh, yeah, Shirley maybe yeah, no, made that up. I don't know. I don't know. I th I, I'm sure I remember hearing you say present perfect is when I'll you don't, you, is when you I, don't give a fuck about time. Struggled, I struggled teaching the present simple, let alone the present perfect. So like, any, I struggled with every all of it, even with the spelling. As you know, I still can't spell grammar. And so, uh, so yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, I think Andy Johnson tells the story. I'll need to get him to, to, to tell it. But there was that, I mean, if you don't mind, I don't, you're not a teacher anymore. I don't mind, I don't mind. Um, that you went into a business English class at Holland Park with a bunch of executives, like one of the more sort of high level English courses. And you wrote like on the board, right, today we're going to do some grammar. And you wrote grammar, G-R-A-M-M-E-R. -M -M -E <laughs> <laughs> I was just testing them so you picked up on it <laughs> you spelt the word grammar wrong and then and then apparently you were you were doing you were doing um because the reason yeah. this story has gone down in history is because I think Andy was observing you yeah he was and you did like first conditional <laughs> and you wrote the first conditional up on the board wrong so it was like you started writing it to teach it and, and you wrote it up wrong and then you kind of realized that you you got it wrong and, and one of the students corrected you right and <laughs> and um or one of the students did something good got something right and then you were like yeah you see look he's, he you said to andy look he learned from the master <laughs> it's true yeah. and this this like swiss guy was like yeah the master of disaster <laughs> <laughs> i also remember that another swiss student said to me uh she goes, yeah he, he said yeah howard you should you should go and and um teach in switzerland they earn a lot a lot of money out there like three times your salary i was like i was like oh yeah really really and he goes yeah and she knows even more even less than you or something like that i was like what you know <laughs> well like i had a teacher in switzerland and she earns three times your salary and she learned yeah she knew even less than you about english <laughs> <laughs> yeah that kind of stuff happened all the time that was all good i think 
I think, you know, you had to like, uh, you had to be a bit thick skinned, didn't you? When you were teaching people sometimes, because, um, you know, you could get some quite negative things and you could either like, you know, ride with it or just like let it get you down. So I think, you know, yeah, I, I, I had some pretty... After a few years. To be honest, I didn't really care that much. I was like, you know what, if you want to give me a three or a two or whatever, go ahead. Yeah. What's your favorite? What's your fa- favorite, nationality? favorite nationality to teach? Yeah. Uh, Italians are always good. They always yeah, always seem here, to Italians always seem to be like super friendly and communicative and chatty and mm. rarely, Brazilian. if ever, had a problem. Brazilians and Italians, I loved them. Brazilians as well. Yeah, yeah. We're always like really Very cool. positive. Late to the class, but yeah, even better it means you know. But uh, yeah, no, no, they were they were great. I loved all the Latinos. Fantastic. Yeah, um, and obviously yeah. I had a soft spot for the Japanese, having lived there for a couple of years and and, and mm. stuff. You you gave up being an English teacher, and you, you've you've kind of transitioned into something else. So what do you do now? So now I sell um, sell furniture, mid century furniture, mid century furniture. So what yeah. this furniture from like the fifties, sixties, seventies. Okay, is that does that count as antiques? No, like, I mean, generally, like, antiques are anything over 100 years old. So I started out selling, you know, like, antiques, typical kind of dark wood furniture. And then I moved on to kind of the retro, which is what everyone wants in London. And, you know, in the m- kind of cities around the world, really, is kind of what's hip nowadays. Yeah. Retro. Um, the retro, yeah. Vintage, mid-century furniture. What kind of thing? Yeah. Can you describe the sorts of things that we're talking about? So, you know, like, kind of Danish, Danish kind of teak sideboards and chest of drawers you know kind of lighter wood mm-hmm. that sort of thing yes so, yeah scandy style stuff scandy style stuff exactly that's what everyone wants at the moment how did you get into that then basically how did i get into it? i had i was i've been teaching for about eight years and i was like you know what i feel like i'm just on a round on um a merry-go-round here and i just kind of like thought you know i want to do something else and my, my wife got pregnant. My then, she wasn't my wife then, but she got pregnant. I was like, you know what? Am I really going to be teaching for the rest of my life? And um, my mum's an antiques dealer, and she has been for a long time. So she was. She kept saying to me, why don't you try and get into this game? You know, try and try and start to sell, buy and sell things. And I went to a car boot sale. I don't know if, you're, if your listeners know what a car boot sale is, but it's basically on a Saturday or Sunday in England, people just rock up to a car park with a stuff in their car, which stuff they don't want. And they sell it for, you know, very cheap price. So I bought, I, I think I went to one in Battersea to a car boot sale and I bought a mirror for like 20 quid. And I think I sold it for like, sold it the next week for like 50 quid. And I was like, well, you know what? I made 50, I made 30 quid on that. So um, I thought, yeah, that was quite easy. So then I, next week I went back and I bought a couple. And then I started buying mirrors and I buy, this is while I was teaching. And then uh, basically um, I started filling up my house with stuff and I started making more money doing that than I was teaching. And then um, I had my first kid and I was like, you know what, I'll give this a go. And so I started doing it full time and that was about seven years ago. And then it's kind of just grown organically from then to, to where it is nowadays. Mm. Wow, cool. So so do you have like a, what is it, a shop? Is it an online shop? Now, you have- um, I've got in a place called Peckham, which is in southeast London, which actually got voted quite funnily, the seventh coolest place in the world in Time Out magazine. Uh, last year seriously Which, if, you, if you came to peckham you you would laugh um but you know some of your listeners should go there. it's quite a cool place there's so, a lot of like funky bars and trendy people hanging about um but peckham um, has had a mixed reputation hasn't it because it used to be quite yeah rough. it's quite is it still yeah. rough is it still as rough as it used yeah, to be it's certainly rough around the i mean there's certain parts which are you know quite rough but it's it's getting gentrified at a rate that i couldn't even you know every time you walk down the high street there's another bar there's another you know trendy new um you know, mainly bars and cafes and that kind of thing, which if you'd gone there 10 years ago, you know, you wouldn't recognize it. Um, and a lot of younger kind of hipsters, sort of 20 to 30 year old are all moving in. So 40, so, um, 40 something, it's changed massively. It's changed massively. 40 something, uh, vintage furniture dealers and, uh, exactly. Well, coming up to 50 something soon. Oh, yeah, so, really? yeah. Yeah. Not too far away. Um, Cool. So you've got like a, I think it's called a lockup. Is that is that technically the right term? No, I've got a warehouse now. Warehouse. So it's like, um, about twelve hundred square foot, um, which I don't know how you describe it. So it's like a, it's it's fairly big. So um, basically, it's in a railway arch underneath 
Peckham railway station. Yeah. So I've got one of those. It's very, very high. And basically during the week, it, it, it's basically a storage place, but it's also a shop. So on Saturday and Sunday, I'm open nine till five. Um, and, but people come down during the week as well. So they make an appointment during the week, but Saturday, Sunday, I'm open both days, you know, and everything's laid out. And, um, so yeah, it's kind of like, um, a vintage fair, should we say? I don't know. It was, yeah. That's cool. But you, it, does most of your business come through customers dropping by the, the shop at the weekend or is it mostly online uh, orders? To be honest with you, it's, it's, I mean, the only way people know about me is online. So like I'm on, I mainly advertise on like Facebook, on Instagram, on um, like Gumtree um, and other websites, but mainly to be honest with you, Facebook, Facebook marketplace is great. And also my own website um, and Instagram as well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of how people know me and then word has spread. So, you know, th- someone was coming and say, Oh, you know, my mate bought a cyborg a few last weekend. So, you know, I, I've come down. So, um, so that's kind of how it's, how it's sort of grown. So, I mean, generally I don't have people walking by cause it's, it's on a kind of an industrial part of Peckham. So it's all, you know, it's all done through the web. All right. So someone would go to they they'd be on Instagram or whatever, and you've got a picture of a sideboard. What is yeah. a, what is a sideboard, by the way? Sideboards are like generally like a six foot thing. You put your TV on and you hide your stuff inside. And um, I don't know how do I describe it. Like I should really of, know. Welcome back to the days of being an English teacher. Yeah, <laughs> it's um, uh, so it's, like, uh, it, it's a long. It's a long. It's like a long cupboard isn't it like a long yeah. wide cupboard not very high as you say you can put your tv on it that's why you're a better teacher than me <laughs> so yeah kind of they just they they see my stuff on the internet and they either buy it through my website um and then i get it delivered to them or um or they come down in you know car or a zip van or whatever and pick it up themselves and then maybe buy more stuff as well hopefully fingers crossed ah so when they hit the, sh- the wow. shop are you doing some yeah. sort of point of sale of you need to you need to upsell so you know you're because it's all generally the same era and that's generally what people are, are kind of you know if they're buying one thing they want their house to look kind of similar with similar bits of furniture so often they'll buy sometimes people will buy multiple things so um so yeah i mean interestingly i had a guy from south korea who came last week and bought probably about 20 bits of furniture off me which is shipped out to south korea yeah um so yeah it's, it's kind of worldwide everyone is at the moment mid-century furniture is kind of the hot the hot furniture thing so listeners if you are in search of some authentic mid-century come down to peckham and if you say luke's podcast you get 10 percent off as well <sighs> listeners so, well check out the, <laughs> check out the exclusive discount that howard is offering you, there you just, go, guys. just for being Lepster. So if you say I listen to Luke's podcast, oh, is it a Lepster, I didn't know that. Lepster, right. yeah, is this the is L E P? Yeah, that's right, L E P. Mm-hmm. Lepster. So if you, you, but the thing is, listeners, if you'd want to get the ten percent discount, you have to pronounce both my name and the word podcast correctly. <laughs> so it's not looks English pot cat. It's not uh, looks English postcard. Okay. Luke's English podcast. If you can say that correctly, you get a ten percent discount. Yep. Um, is there a, okay. are there any terms and conditions for this? No, no terms conditions. That offer applies for the next six months. <laughs> from the time that they listen to this, or from the time this exactly, is published? Exactly. Exactly. Wait, no. Surely it's from the time that this is published, not from um, the time they listen to it, because they could listen yeah, to this whatever, in ten years. You know, I'm not, not going to. I'm not going to like. I'm not going to get the data. You know, if they can. You know what? From next year, whenever. Okay. It's fine. That's awesome. I give them ten percent. Okay, brilliant. And you've got other stuff. What kind of other stuff then do people generally pick up when they they've bought a sideboard? Generally, and they, they 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 bought a sideboard. They come in to get it. What other kind of stuff are they getting? Like just 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 your kind of. I mainly sell. I don't really sell quirky stuff. I sell stuff that people need for the house. So sideboards, chests of drawers, record cabinets. You know, because vinyl is big in, is big nowadays, isn't it? Everyone wants somewhere to store their vinyl. Um, chairs, dining tables, armchairs, mirrors. Kind of your common all sort of household sort of stuff. Um, so, um, yeah. You said, fi- and I've got a website as well, guys. So if you want to check it out, go on there. What's I'm the sure ma- Luke will tell you uh, what the website is later. I will be giving all the details. Um, Great. What's the? Uh, you said 50s and 60s, right? Mm. Do you find that there is a point at which the furniture stops being sort of um, interesting for customers? Um, 
I mean, I mean, generally, yeah. Like when you go, if you go to like the eighties and nineties, there's a lot of pine and stuff like that. So pine's quite hard to sell. But you know, I mean, this it swings and roundabouts. Things come back. So I'm sure, and because at the moment, like antique furniture, the kind of dark furniture is very hard to sell. Uh, but I'm sure in five, ten years' time that'll come back again, and people will be snapping it up. Um, so, sorry, what was your question again? <laughs> well, basically, my, my, it wasn't a very good question. Uh, I expect my listeners were like, uh, "What?" Um, <laughs> so, what I meant was, uh, is there a period that is like out of fashion? I mean, so if you get into the seventies, like does so 70- like the antique, antique furniture is very out of fashion at the moment? You're talking sort uh, of pre dark. Sorry, uh, you're talking about stuff that was made before the sort of uh, turn of the century. Uh, yeah, that kind of thing. I mean, yeah. even though some in some places it could still kind of command big prices. Generally, I'd say certainly in London, and to the sort of people I'm selling to in their sort of twenties to forties, they're not really interested in the kind of dark wood furniture because generally they've got small flats. And you know, dark furniture in a small flat doesn't really doesn't really go that well. So, um, so yeah. Also, that dark furniture tends to be quite ornate, doesn't it? Sort of curved, yeah. like, curved lines and and a lot of details and things. Whereas the the, the mid century stuff is very plain, isn't it? It's very sparse. Exactly, it's very simple and yeah. So, um, um, yeah, I think you can explain it better than me, to be honest with you. <laughs> but yeah, you know, I mean, that's just it's um, it's 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 just the fashion at the moment, but everything changes, you know, it's, it's very cyclical. So something I was selling three, four years ago might no longer be popular. So you have to, you have to keep an eye with what's going on and, um, keep changing what you're doing and what you're selling. Okay. Um, can I ask you where you actually get all the stuff? No, (laughs) Um, (laughs) no, to be honest, I mean, I've got contacts now. So like over the years I've built up people that can supply me with furniture. So, um, so from them, so I guess like one of the things that you're offering is is the the fact that over the years you have found sources for this stuff. It's not easy to find, but you- no, it's, it's very difficult to find. So you need uh, if you've got good sources, you can get a plentiful amount. Then um, then yeah, you're and you're in the right place mm. at the right time. Then you're onto a winner. Okay, cool. Um, what was I going to? Have you ever bought a fake? Do you have to deal with fake stuff? Is that no? I don't think like I don't really think like in the sixties or seventies they didn't really make a lot. From what I know, I mean, because I don't sell high end furniture. I sell like middle middle of the road, you know. So typically, I'll sell a sideboard for three, four, five hundred pounds. Um, yeah. You know, you can buy them for five, ten, fifteen thousand pounds. You know, sort of higher end ones. Um, but as far as I know, you don't really get. You don't really get fakes. I mean, there's a lot of people who try and pass furniture offers. Every, everyone says their furniture is Danish when it clearly isn't. So, you know, that's – and I, I don't really do that because I think you're just cheating the customers. So, um, but, yeah, I mean, um, we don't really have fakes. I mean, there's better made – you know, the Danish furniture is, like, really well made. It's beautiful. Whereas some of it, some of the kind of mid-century furniture is very badly made. It's just a veneer. Do you know what a veneer is? So it's very thin wood with chipboard underneath. So, um, the quality isn't that good. So, um, so yeah, you, I kind of try and sell the better quality stuff. Right. So talking about selling, okay. Mm. Um, let's, let's, you know, in English teaching, we love to do role plays and stuff all the time. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's yeah, yeah. imagine, yeah, that I'm a customer. I've, I've, okay. I've bought a sideboard, uh, on your website and I've yeah. come down to your warehouse to pick it up. Yeah. See if you can um, try and upsell some other bits, <laughs> other bits and pieces to me, okay? So I just turn up. I've parked my van outside. It's a large van. So I, now, now you've got a van. You, I'm already excited. Yeah, I'm like, right, it's a large. It's, it's more. The van is too big. Oh, I'm like wow. It's a large transit van. It's this. I there's, can't hide my excitement. There's yeah, too yeah, much yeah. space in this van, but okay, I've, this okay. is the van I've got. So I, I, st- I walk in. I've you know I've got some quite nice shoes on. Um, first of all i check your pockets to see if they're bulging or not okay and then i know i'm not a winner am i are, yeah, they, sure. are they bulging uh because well, i can actually see your face so i'm thinking this guy doesn't have a lot of money but um, <laughs> <laughs> um no like generally yeah like, i mean when people come in you just like go on then okay let's do it. so in. i i walk in and what well, i just hi. guess um hi I've, I've just come down to pick up the sideboard that i ordered on online uh, you- 
You're Luke, aren't you? Luke Thompson, yeah. Oh, yeah. How are you doing? You all right? Good, thanks. Yeah, I found the place all right. Great, great, great. Yeah, That's you good. bought the uh, this sideboard here, didn't you? Is this the one? Yeah, this looks Ooh. like it. Yeah. Okay. Can I? Do you mind if I just have a look at it before? No, by all means. By all means. Okay. Just have a little look. Okay. Da-da-da. It's lovely, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. The legs are on. That's fine. It's, uh, it seems to be okay. Um, so, like you say, does it have a does it have a mark on it? By the way, I mean a, 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 a maker's mark of some kind. Is there a, a, a uh, yeah. label in, in this one? This is more of a generic one. So, um, hence, you know, if you're looking for something, you know, with um, <laughs> this is <laughs> so, so the answer is no, right? There's no no, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. But you know, it's beautiful, and I think you know you've got an absolute bargain for that price. <laughs> How much is it again? Sorry, uh, two nine five. That's right. You, yeah, sir. of course. So that is, uh, you know, we did agree that. Okay. Yeah. Um, but why don't you have a look around, see what else I've got, and um, you, you know, I've I've got lots of other bits would, would which would complement that. Oh yeah, you just moved house, haven't you? So I'm sure you want to fill your house with my stuff. <laughs> How did you know I've just moved house? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't because I know your sister. I didn't. We used to go out together. A what? Yeah, sure. I'll have a look. I mean, I've, I'm really just interested in this in this particular item. But I mean, do you have some others that are, are like this? Yeah, I've, I mean, I've got uh, I've I've got another. What kind of like um, what are you actually looking for? What kind of size? Because size is very important. What what I found in this business is um, size matters. Most people have a very specific space. So um, yeah. So what you know, what we need is is one that's uh, like whew, about yay big. That's not very. Did you, did you do the exact measurements? Do I know about measurements? Well, I know, you know that, exact- I know that they exist, but um, yeah. So, so, so it's oh, fucking. Uh, just give me a measurement. Go on. I mean, I'm thinking like a high class gentleman like you would maybe like this Danish rosewood one for a thousand pounds. That does look nice. It's a bit above my uh, price. If you take it away now, I can do it for nine hundred. Nine hundred. <laughs> It's still a bit too much for me, I'm afraid. Uh, I might. Mm, would you do seven fifty? Because this is a very nice one. To be fair, and we've been looking for one like this, haven't we, darling? Yes, we have. That's my wife. Uh, tell you what, eight hundred. Take it away now. It's yours. Eight hundred. Yeah. Tell you what, right? Let me just have a look, another look around, see if there's any other items in here that I like. Because that is that is great. That is exactly what we've been looking for. Let me just have a little look around it though, and see if there's for some other stuff. Okay. 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 So, a few minutes later, I found this lamp. Would you Would you be willing to throw in this these two lamps? Um, for and I'll, you if, know you, what? if you I'll throw in the, the two lamps, I'll take it for eight hundred. And we got. I'll deal. be honest with you. I only just got them yesterday, and I've already got someone coming down to see them. So, um, to be honest, I think I'm looking for full price on those. Okay. All right. That's a pity. Because I'm going to have to let the other customer down. I'm afraid. Mm, yeah, I see. Even though you, but if you were to offer me full price, I might, I might just do it. How about half <laughs> price? Yeah, go on, you could have it. Ah, oh, brilliant. Okay, you look like my let her know your sister. It's yours. <laughs> <laughs> Keep my sister out of it. Okay, I'll take, I'll take it then. Thanks, Deal. mate. Right, can you put it in the van? Um, yeah, me and my assistant, because I've got someone. Your sister. With me. Your sister. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, my sister has worked there a couple. I of know times, your sister. You know what? My sister worked. She she worked there twice, but you know, I had to fire her because she played Michael Bublé all day. Is this this my, is real? This is real now, right? This is this is true. Actually, real. And I didn't find out until look. I was I was on holiday, so I employed her for the day. And when I got back, like some a customer came in from the week before. She was like, "Oh, you know, I met your sister. Really, really nice." And she was playing Michael Bublé all day, and I was like, "What?" So anyway, she got fired. You, know, you can't be selling this. Literally, <laughs> you fired her because of the music she played in the shop. Yeah, yeah. Well, fair enough. Yeah, I mean, I would, I would do the I mean, same. Michael Bublé, it was too much. Yeah, too, Michael Bublé was hits. Too, and um, Bublé's all right, but you can have too much. Mark, come on, not in a, not in a retro warehouse. You know, at least play something. I don't know, something slightly cool. What do you, or just don't think at all. What, either nothing or, or what? What's your music of choice? To be honest with what I like, I like um, just something kind of more ambient to kind of, so people can have a conversation with each other and feel like they're not being listened to. They're well, being too overbearing. So, you know, they can't think. 
just some general so, mood music oh, that, 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 kind of stuff yes yeah, Okay, and then they can be like, "What do you think of What do you think of this one?" Oh, yeah, this guy's know. a right idiot. Yeah, yeah, this guy's really dodgy. I think we should leave straight away before he um, does something <laughs> weird. <laughs> um, tell me about the future, Howard. What do you? Can you have you got any uh, predictions well, about know, the future like, uh, of the industry? The future, the what well, my future, or to be honest, I mean the way it's gone. So I've been doing it for like seven years. Who knows? You know the stars. The stars. The um. The limit is that the expression. Yeah. The sky's the, the, the sky's the, the limit. Sky's, what am I saying? The sky's the limit. I don't know. You know what? I, I take every day as it comes because I think if you plan too far ahead, uh, you know, you start seeing it as a job. I don't see it as a job. I just enjoy it for what it is. Yeah. And obviously, I've got a plan, but it's not like right in five years I'm going to be doing this or that. Or I just yeah. kind of like take it as it goes and um and yeah. Well, it's going really, really well. I mean, it's amazing. You've got the warehouse and everything. I mean, uh, mm. you said 1,200 square feet. Yeah, 1,200 square feet. I think it's about 300 square meters. It's pretty big. It's about the tenth of a And it is pitch. rammed. It is rammed full of furniture as well. Is it it's really? not. It's more of a, a warehouse at the moment than a boutique because uh, there's so much furniture in there. Uh, what's the best thing you've ever found or the best item that you've ever got hold of? Can you... Th- the best thing, thing um your favorite thing? thing to be honest with you i mean um i found a few things for free the pit my neighbor actually left a beautiful bookcase on his front on his thing only two doors away which i sold for over 300 pounds um and literally took me about five minutes but yeah i mean to be honest actually the best thing i've ever sold my favorite was i bought um a leather sofa from an auction from greenwich auction which no longer exists but i bought that about three years ago and I went to pick it up in a van and I went as um, I drove about five minutes. I stopped at a shop to get a drink and this bloke looked in the back of my van because the back was open. He was like, how much do you want for that sofa? I was like 300 quid. So literally I'd owned the sofa for 10 minutes and I bought it for like 70 quid and he bought it off me for 300. So I made 230 quid for literally in about 10 minutes. Wow. So that's, it's not the most profit, but it's, it was a, just a great sale because, you know, you didn't really have to do anything. So that's, yeah, that's yeah. one of my favorites. Do you do you often buy things at auction? No, I used to, but a lot of them have closed down now in London. So, um, so because because I think of, you know online because of eBay and all these other things, it's a lot more popular to sell, them on, to sell stuff online. So um, they do still exist, but you can you can go there for the whole day and get nothing, you know. So, or you, you, I mean, you can win big or you can get nothing. So it's it's quite risky. Um, and it's quite time consuming as well. It depends who else is there. You know, if, you, if there's one other person who wants what you want, you can end up in a bidding war and end up, you know, sp- spending well over the odds or auction. I mean, it looks pretty cool when you see it on TV and there's yeah. like guys kind of with newspapers kind of going, yeah, you know, 50,000 to the gentleman in the hat, you know, and yeah. there's, there's guys on the telephone and stuff like that. It looks pretty exciting um buying and selling at auction is it i mean is it you know yeah i mean you can as i say you can really you can do really well you know because stuff generally they start very low at an auction because they want to move it on because they get loads of stuff every week so um and if there's no one else who's interested in that item then you can get something for literally nothing but if there is someone else you know you can then end up in a bidding war with them like you looking at them them look at you thinking right i really want this and you can end up spending you know so much and literally just about making that back when you sell it so um so yeah i mean it's it was it was a lot of fun it's a great learning game as well because you can see what other dealers are buying and the sorts of things that are are in and what's not in but um but yeah but i don't really go to them anymore right when you get an item um mm. do you have to do anything to it before yeah, you sell it on uh, if something's like really really like for example i, I had a sideboard which um I think it cost me a hundred pounds. It was a Danish one. It's quite a rare one. Um, and it cost me about 300 pounds to get it. I got someone, I know a guy who can like do them up for me and he literally redid the whole sideboard and I sold it for quite a lot more, you know, once that was done. But generally most of the furniture is not worth spending a lot of time or money on because you're not going to make that back. So, you know, everything gets polished and stuff gets fixed a little bit, you know, um, 
here and there and you know sometimes the chairs are wobbly so they need fixing and stuff but generally not a lot of stuff um but the more expensive stuff yeah i'll, I'll i know people who can can do it up for me so yeah that goes um, has covid been a problem you know what it's i've never it's never my business has never done better than during covid it's been incredible literally from the moment it kicked off because everyone's at home on their phones buying stuff and they're all still getting paid so um so yeah my i've never actually done better than in the last sort of four months which is a terrible i don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing to say but it's i've just been lucky because i've in one of those sort of businesses where everyone's doing up their house you know they're all at home they think what else are we gonna do let's do up a house we've been meaning to do it for years and years so um they're all buying furniture wow so uh, so it's been incredible yeah okay well good for you i guess yeah it has, yeah it's been um it's been all right uh, my brother asked me to ask you this. What do you think about yeah. upcycling? And what, upcycling. And, and wait, what is upcycling yeah. anyway? So like upcycling is like changing the furniture to make it, as you see it, better or more modern. So like there's some really bad types of upcycling. What I mean, I call it bad and that's maybe me being snobbish, but they call it like shabby chic. So people will paint something, paint like, um, you know, a chest of drawers. And then they'll scratch it so it looks kind of old, you know, scratch it on the edges and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, they'll so, paint it and then they'll scratch yeah, all the paint off. A lot, yeah, so there's a lot of people who are doing that and it can be done. I mean, some people can do it really well and it can look amazing, but generally it's not done that well. Um, but some, I mean, some, upcy- some people upcycle stuff and it looks incredible. You can totally change a piece of furniture to if it's done well, if you know what you're doing and you can make it look absolutely incredible and you, could sell, you can make a lot of money doing it. So um, if you've got the skills, then um, there are a lot of people doing it, but there's a lot of people doing it really well. So, um, so yeah, I don't do it, mm-hmm. but, um, but yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Cool. Well, it's really great to talk to you. And you too. Listeners, you do international sales, right? So if some, someone is interested, they can go to your website, which is Vintique yeah, London. Yeah. I'll, I'll be explaining that Just again. Message later. me. Message me with um, your postcode um and i'll come back to your price i mean i sent um a sideboard out to california about three weeks ago so some stuff to south korea as i was saying i mean it's not so common sending stuff abroad but we do it sometimes yeah yeah all right that's really cool and don't forget listeners that 10 percent discount if you can pronounce, you know that. if you can pronounce the name of this podcast correctly and even if you can't you'll get the 10 percent discount uh, <laughs> howard it's really good to talk to you again Thank, thank you very much for talking to me and my audience on the podcast. Pleasure. And, um, well, I must come down and, and have a look at the place. And you too, Luke, get a 10% discount if you come down. Oh, yeah, really? Yeah. Just but 10%. bring the missus. Bring the missus because men coming down their own, they never buy anything. They always need to bring their wife because she's, as we know, she's the decision maker. Mm. So, uh, Is that so, right? Yeah. Have you noticed that? Have you learned anything else about human uh, nature, human nature no, from this. kind of main thing like when when women say oh yeah i'm gonna send my boyfriend down to pick up the sideboard usually he'll come down and if it's like say it's 200 pounds he'll say yeah i'll give you 50 quid for it i'm like no it's 200 pounds they'll go right i'm not having it so then they'll walk off and i know there'll be a massive round when they get home so yeah it's um yeah <laughs> all, always always okay all right cool well you know see you soon hopefully if that's at all yeah. possible these days yeah, but um yeah thanks again for talking to me cool. it's been cool all right mate cool cheers you can already see that chill in the glass out that's a good thing it's gorgeous it's gorgeous, it's gorgeous. you got perfect you ice got perfect ice and a really cold and a really cold glass, really cold glass. So there you go, folks. That was my conversation with my mate Howard Roach and his vintage furniture business in London. I hope you found that interesting. Uh, I particularly enjoyed reminiscing about the old teaching days at the beginning of the conversation. So there you go, vintiquelondon.co.uk, V I N T I Q U E L O N D O N. Dot co dot uk that's where you go if you're interested in checking out any of howard's stuff i mean even if you're not interested in making a purchase go and have a look at the website just to see the sort of stuff that we're talking about you can see pictures of sideboards and bookcases and chests of drawers and all those things 
and uh, you can see the lovely stuff that he's got for sale. But uh, yes, it is possible to do international international shippings. And don't forget, you get a 10% discount for all Lepsters. Even if you can't pronounce Luke's English podcast, if you just say, that, oh, uh, you know, oh, Luke podcast, look podcast, that'll do. And you'll still get the 10% uh, discount. So there you are. Thanks again to Howard for being on the podcast. Thanks, Howard. Thanks again for being on the podcast after a sort of nearly 11-year gap. We'll catch up with Howard again in, what, 2031? <laughs> if there's anything left of the of the world, oh my God, what is planet Earth going to be like in 2031? We'll all just be floating around in hover cars and we'll be um, like, what's, what's that thing? Tr- um, when you teleport, yeah, we'll all be teleporting everywhere, flying around on jetpacks. We'll all be eating, like, all of our meals will just be pills. You'll just take a pill out of a silver wrapper, put it in the microwave, and it just turns into a sort of a cake, and you eat that. And you're just eating three of those a day. Um, the air the air has become so polluted that you can't actually breathe it anymore, so everyone lives in these sort of pods, these sealed pods. Um, and... Yeah, it's a bit like the sort of science fiction, dystopian science fiction film I had in my head. When was that? In the last episode of the free last last free one? Or I think that's in a premium episode. I ended up ended up going off on a complete mega random ramble tangent about a science fiction film. Um, which happens in, in Luke's English Podcast Premium. It's not all just serious language teaching. There's plen- there's plenty of silly nonsense as well to keep you entertained as we go and don't forget premium uh, series 24 ladies and gents if you're a premium lepster you need to go and listen to those episodes parts one to eight are now available for you target language pronunciation and memory tests and so on that's how it builds we've got probably 12 episodes in the series but do check out parts one to eight also all of the pronunciation videos that i recorded in june um, do check those out as well. You'll find them in the pronunciation videos category in the in your phone and also on the website. Um, teacherluke.co.uk slash premium info. That's where you get the details about Luke's English Podcast Premium and how to sign up and all that stuff. Thank you very much for listening to Luke's English Podcast. It's been an absolute pleasure talking to you again. How about you? Where are you? What are you doing? Where are you? You could just, you know, send, leave a comment under this episode just saying where you are and what you've been doing while listening to this episode. I'm very curious. I'm, I'm always curious about what's going on. Um, so where are you? What are you doing? And uh, what are you wearing? No, you don't, you don't have to do the what are, you, what are you wearing thing. But simply, where are you and what are you doing while you listen to this? Thank you for listening. I'll speak to you again very soon in the podcast, in the podcast and on the podcast. I'll speak to you very soon on the podcast, but for now, it's time to say goodbye. Bye, 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 bye. Put on the wall. Thanks for listening to Luke's English Podcast. For more information, visit teacherluke.co.uk. 